Hey, welcome. More more fun and more fun and frivolity. Sun. More fun in the sun. <laughs> hey, did you say on the last show that you're an analytical chemist? Yeah. I know you're. Oh yeah. <laughs> How do you spell that? T H A T. Okay. <laughs> Good. 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 A. Okay. Today, guys, we're going to be continuing on Delta Eight. Delta Eight, the molecule, the myth, the legend. Boom, boom. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna be. Doing. I like it. The molecule, the myth. Yeah, you know, you know, we, you know it, Delta Eight is is getting such traction in the marketplace right now, and you're seeing it all over the place. I yes, mean, it's it's in convenience stores now. You can see it, and uh, you know, people are selling it in in, in mom pops, and and uh, so it's it's really getting a lot of people are doing it. Yeah, there. people so, are really enjoying the benefits yeah. of, of that, and I know we're getting a lot of questions from you guys on right. what. Um, what to do with it, how to do, how to process it, where, where yeah. is it? I mean, I, and hopefully these are, are really good. Part of this series is, you know, in response to what you're asking for from us. Right. So, right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, back by popular demand, I guess we we're going to spend another uh, 20, 30 minutes talking about uh, Delta eight and, and what it is and why we like it and uh, how, how to make are it. Are there going to be any and, tables? Uh, no, but we will. Go, I think what we'll no do. No tables. Uh, we're going to go over a, uh, just just do a quick review on last week, and then okay. we're gonna then we're gonna delve into a couple of the items. Uh, you know, in case you missed last week's podcast, um, I think we'll go over a couple of the more additional items because we were going to talk about you know comparisons and results of comparisons between brands and, and things to watch out for. Okay. So um, again. We're not setting ourselves up as a watchdog or anything like that. We have no no real, um, what do they got, horses in the race, I guess? Dog in that hunt. We don't have any dog in the hunt. We, we're, uh, we're, we're just basically a uh, manufacturer, uh, a country manufacturer in the big city trying to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we don't really, you know, we don't test, we don't really, t you know, do the, you know, we don't do the processing on that um, from the standpoint of, of uh you know making it all but we do sell you equipment we sell yep. you processes we will yep. sell you sops we'll sell you yep. stuff to make it absolutely and we'll sell you consumables so just let us know what you what you're looking for and, and we can help last week we talked about where does it come from mm -hmm. and um something that we didn't talk about you know it doesn't come from the flower the delta eight does not come from flower um, there are very small traces of it in the flower, but it's not in there in a, in a commercially viable amount. So okay. uh, what happens is a lot of people use CBD and they convert it into Delta-8. Uh, and That's what they're doing with the Delta-8. Okay. And the question was, is, is Delta-8 new? Okay. It, it really isn't new. In fact, even conversion in in from CBD into Delta not into Delta nine and then into Delta eight is not new either. Wow. It's been around for a long time. Take a look at this slide, guys, uh, from 1966. Okay, you I think we've been treading the old ground? I mean, we really have. I was six years old. It's kind of uh, you were 1960. Right? 1960? In 1966, wow. I was wow. six years old. Wow. Okay. 19... I'm that old. I didn't think. You're... Wow, you're almost in the 50s. <laughs> you know, almost, almost were born in the fifties. <laughs> almost. That's what. That's when the chrome was real on the cars. You know, not just thicker. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That I remember true. that. Yeah, and it was a real nickel. Uh, it was a real nickel. Yes, <laughs> it was. Wasn't just lead. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, is Delta Eight new? The answer is no, guys. It's really not. Look, this is a this is a quotation. If you guys want to go look up this paper, it'll it'll show you exactly how to to make this. Okay, and you can yeah. guide read it and go ahead and read it and weep. You know, this is how you from would the tetrahedron twenty two. Right, and actually, you can get this online, um, okay. and I think it's it's more or less uh, free. You just type that in, and you can find it out. Now, this comes from Lashulin's lab, who is a very well known scientist. In the area, yeah, in the area of ca uh, cannabinoid research, and uh, you know he's been, you know, he's from Hebrew University, okay, okay? and uh, the the guy has been working on cannabinoids for his entire, you know, professional career, a professor, and so he's been doing all kinds of work and on that. So it's not new, guys. Delta Ten's not new, and the ratios and stuff they've been talking about that for basically forever. Um, you know, and, uh, so a lot of, a lot of the things that you tread out are really, 
Uh, when you see it come up in the marketplace and all of a sudden, wow, it's this new thing. It's really not new. It's been around for a long, That's long, a long, long, long time. time. And what's going through my head right now is Le Chou and Le Chamazel, Haas and Pepper Incorporated for all those Nick Tunes guys out there who love Laverne and Shirley. Anyway, sorry. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know who Laverne is. Is that a ne Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> uh, you know, uh, so look, so the bottom line there is it's not new, um, mm -hmm. but th for some reason, uh, some reason it's come up as being the hot, the latest hotness. So it is the latest hotness from 1966. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm wondering is, you know, why do things become hot all of a sudden when they've been around for so long? You know, it's just kind of weird. Because someone rediscovered it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, right, you know, Mad Men came out and then all of a sudden everybody wanted mid-century modern, which is, means it's old 50s and 60s furniture. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, just as a refresher, guys, here's the CBD molecule. What's the difference between CBD? Here you have CBD. Here you have Delta-9. You're converting it here into Delta-8 and Delta-10. Um, and it's dominant in, in most of the conversions that you do. You're, you're dominating uh, in it, dominant conversion over to Delta-8 under the right conditions. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right conditions, you're going to get a lot of Delta-9, which you do not want. No. Um, and for those of you who are in the processing world, um, when you convert it over to Delta-9, you, 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 if you create a lot of Delta-9 um, and you think you're going to store that in your vault, that's not a good idea. Don't store that in your vault. No. You get rid of it. Okay? So that, that's something you need to think about. You don't want to have a significant amount or you dilute it. Get rid of it or dilute it. The, the, the solution to pollution is... Dilution. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you, got it, you can dilute it. Yeah. Um, you know, put it in a bunch of ethanol and make sure it's under 0.3% so you're not storing a bunch of you know, a hot stuff, right? Because yeah. you don't want to do that. No. Um, so it's just not uh, the right protocol. So every uh, processor should have some sort of SOP or protocol to, to really dilute in case they, especially if they want to store something for some amount of time. Right. right? Yep. So, and then you, and basically you, you, if you put it on a barrel or you put it on a, um, you know, something so that uh, when they test it, it's, it's going to be under the 0.3%. Okay. Sure. Um, we, last week, we went over this comparison, which was kind of nice. It which was, was really, really good. Yeah. I thought that was good. And I, I want to say again, I loved attenuated psychoactive a attenuated effect on, psychoactive the, effect. on the Delta. <laughs> I like, like that? that. I do like that. <laughs> okay. Well, and okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so we were talking about the psychoactive effect of, of, of Delta-8 versus Delta-9. Is this a picture of my brain waves? Uh, this is the brain waves. This is woo. <laughs> um, this, guys, is a chromatogram, okay? And so when, when you go to, uh, uh, you know, when a manufacturer actually goes to uh, the a laboratory, yep. chooses a laboratory, yeah. They order a test from the laboratory, and the laboratory says, well, what do you want me to test for, right? And uh, they'll say, okay, well, I want you to test for Delta-8, I want you to test for Delta-9, and I want you to test for CBD. Okay. okay. So those, there's CBD right there in these, in these arrows here. Here you got CBD here. Here you have Delta-8 here, and here's Delta-9 in that little peak right there. You can see, it, you can see they're not really separated very well in, in as a consequence of that, um, you, you got to really kind of watch out. If you have a huge peak here, and this is kind of oversaturated, you can see it's at 1600. That's because it's so not very dilute. But you can see here, this is a better, better depiction here. Oh, look, at there's another. There's actually two little peaks there. One peak here, and then another little peak there, and then another peak there. These are all unknowns in here. So this is delta 8. That's delta 9. But what's this? And what's that little peak right there? And what's this little peak right there? You got to be careful about those unknown peaks. And okay? this little peak went to the market. This little the other peak <laughs> went home. <laughs> Sorry. This, no, that's good. That's good. See, he's really not listening to what we're saying. He's he's just thinking of his nursery rhymes. No, anyway, I'm no, just. No. Uh, There's a free flow of. Free flow. It's oh, free association. It just <laughs> happens. Sorry. You know, it's no, just, that's how my brain I, works. Why did I even mention that? Okay. <laughs> no, I like it. This, so this little peak went over here. <laughs> the point, guys, is that, hey, look, this is what they look like. Um, and so you can identify, you know, how much of the material is in your sample. Okay. And typically what they'll do is they'll dilute it down and you get these peaks out. And the analytical chemist will say, 
oh, I can tell you that it's got, you know, 15%, uh, you know, Delta 8. It's got sure. a non-detect of Delta 9. And it's got a it's got a no CBD in it at all uh, that we can detect yeah. given this particular method. Okay? Sure. So um, obviously, if you go to different labs, we'll have different detection limits and different protocols for that. Okay. Yep. Uh, in in the marketplace, sometimes there is a good market for someone who does their analy analytical chemistry not very well, <laughs> okay. so that you get a favorable. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Certification. Uh, well put. Okay. Yes. So look, um, I don't look. We're, we want to have the best uh, possible, um, you know, setup, and we want to have. If if there's unknowns, we should tell the customer that there's sure. unknowns. Okay. Agreed. And we've been talking about that forever. Forever. You know? Yeah. And so residuals are important, and and also you know, look if you have a product and and um, they don't for example, in the method measure Delta nine and they just say, and all they report is Delta eight. Mm -hmm. So uh, like uh, I can do that. I can just say to you, I will pay you to tell me how much Delta eight is in there. They'll say, okay, there it is. There's there how is. much it is, Boop. but they're going to, they're not going to tell you about anything else, right? No, just because the, they're not calibrated for it. So, um, that's when you go and you look at, you know, your certificates of analysis, which you have here. Um, you can see here, there's a, this has got some Delta eight here. Um, and then here, there's some CBN, there's some CBC in here. So it's a really high percentage of Delta eight. Okay. But not tested for residual solvents. So there's other, you know, residuals in there that right. are not tested. So you don't know what's in there. Yeah. That's scary. Um, but it is pretty amazing here. This particular one here, you can see, um, it says a no detect on the Delta Delta nine. Okay. Hmm. Mm, I don't know, I'm not really sure about that. So we took this lot and yeah. we got the pen. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> what does it really okay. look like? And that's this this brand A. Oh, look at this. Yeah. This is a table. This I love the table. So here and you told us is, there weren't going to be any. Yeah. So okay, this is not a gotcha moment. Okay, at all. Uh, but but this is kind of a hey, consumer guys, and also you guys out there who are doing manufacturing um you want to be able to put the stuff out so if you go out onto the marketplace and you start buying these pens up and you yep. get them in yep. you open them up and you take them to the lab and you test them um you know y you really can't send that stuff to to distribution because you're opening up your distribution to uh you know a bad thing yeah because they have products on that are hot that yep. you're certifying are perfectly fine yeah okay that's this first one right here there's four percent delta nine in there i don't know where that why it is that there's no detect when there's four percent yes how is that possible it isn't no except except if if it wasn't really even if the, if there was no separation and they're just saying okay all that's delta eight that none of it's delta nine it's possible yeah but yeah because yeah, yeah. It, it's possible it's not right it's just not, it is it's not possible. correct so 55 percent of delta eight um many unidentified peaks okay mm -hmm. um in when you have that unidentified peaks and what they look like is this guys you can see that all yep. those unidentified peaks in there you you gotta really um you know just just make sure that you have a good clean chromatogram i think that's what you want to have and you want to make sure they're they do the residuals on them that, you know, that's so because they're using solvents and things like that these days. Nowadays, we're using solvents, uh, you know, more and more. And, uh, you know, it's probably should you should be always so, getting residual uh, numbers out. There so we be, may we may need. You know, you, did you see in that certificate? They yeah. didn't even measure the residuals. Not at all. So what what are you what are you smoking? What are you? Yeah. What, what are you imbibing? OK. Yeah. You want to know as a consumer, yeah. your consumers want to know. So my question is, if if I'm if I'm I'm I've got a shop <clears throat> and I purchase some pens and I have it tested and I go. Oop, right. Look at this. Or one of my customers has it tested or somebody comes in and you, you know, got to make a business decision if you know okay so you're kind I, of in a you're kind of in a hard place there yeah okay so i 
bought this and now I've been kind of swindled or whatever by the person who well, I've been told this yeah. is the COA right that showed it as compliant yeah but it's not right but now I've got this liability so of having exactly. this felony so I would definitely get it out of your get out it of your, out of the store out of the store that's yeah. the first thing the second thing that's uh, that I'm wondering about and I haven't I haven't really looked at but I'm not really sure uh you know, does Delta 8, and maybe some of you guys uh, who are listening to this, maybe you can, maybe, you know, there's a, there's some crafters in here, some awesome crafters. Have there you ever are a seen lot like of good a, crafters Like a here. Delta 8 go back to a Delta 9? Because oh. that could also be something that's happening to... Oh, does that people. happen? We'd love to hear. Yeah, we'd love to hear. Type so that in. If, you, if you've had any, uh, you know... Any kind of conversion back or a basically a reconversion back to Delta nine over time, that could be, you know, maybe the thing is, maybe it was perfectly compliant at one point in time when they first started and then it sat on the shelf for, you know, maybe a couple months and then, and then it's in make his, makes its way into your hand and it's got a little bit too much in there. So let, let's, uh, maybe we can see if that's the case. Maybe, I don't know how stable the but Delta to go is. That's from the question. zero to 4%. Probably not. That that's... 4% is kind of a... A magical number, in fact, uh, you know, so the, um, like, okay, th there's a there's a couple thermodynamic equilibriums that happen. One is at, like, 15%, uh, okay? okay, and um, this is what the organicers tell me. And I, obviously, you know, you organicers. <laughs> the organicers. <laughs> you know, you know, when you're talking about the mechanism and, you know, what the therm thermodynamic limits are. Um, and you can change those just by changing, uh, for example, the conditions of your reaction. Gotcha. A lot of people will, that's what a whole method is all about method okay. development and things yep. like that. So, um, I just kind of digress there. Sorry about that. Geeked out on you guys, but here you can see brand B, brand C, it. we got, you know, uh, okay. Varying levels of Delta eight. We actually expect that you can also see brand C is kind of. They, they had a lot of Delta nine in there because I think brand C was kind of diluted. Oh, so it was diluted and it had a lot of Delta eight. Wow. So I don't know. May, a I don't lot know of Delta exactly. nine. You mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Delta nine. Excuse me. Yeah. So also the identi unidentified peaks that is, uh, basically that, you know, their CBN or their CBC or the CBG or whatever, they're all coming up in, in on those chromatograms. If they're a peak in the chromatogram, you should take a look at them and make sure that they're identified in there. Absolutely. If they can't identify it, then it may be something else. Right. It may be a process aid. It may be the solvent. It may be something else that's coming there and saying, Hey, there's something wrong here. Right. So that's a, uh, that's why I think it's a good important for you to identify those peaks. Um, this is an example. We helped these guys formulate that laws amp. Uh, they formulated one. You know, so what we ended up getting uh, with the formula we gave them was like a 60, 60 percent, something like that, 70 percent. And then the, there was a, like a one or two percent of this Delta nine and it was diluted down and gotcha. then tested. And then that's how they got the point two point five percent. Also, what's important there is you get a nice clean chromatogram. And when I say a clean chromatogram, I mean all the peaks that are identifiable in the chromatogram sure. have been. Well, I, it, it, it's okay if you have a peak there. It just should be identified. identified. If you have CBN in there, yep. you should tell, hey, you got CBN in there. Okay, so, um, and then the effect is mellow. These other ones, uh, we didn't we didn't ask anybody to try them because they were basically non-compliant. So you, if you want to find out what the effect of Delta-8 is, you, you really can't be taking a mixture of Delta-8 and Delta-9 and saying, okay, mm -hmm. this is this is this is, uh, you know, a, a good way to, to look at it. So, yeah. And someone told me that, you know, like uh, brand day, I remember when we were doing these tests that, uh, trying that vape pen was very caustic to their throat and their nose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it had that, that, uh, yeah, because so when, you, uh, because it's highly processed, if you, you know, and if it's not really, um, if it doesn't have like a terp terpene entourage effect and maybe some mellowing effect from mm -hmm. uh, from CBD in a formulated product. In fact, um, we used a CBD distillate to to really dilute that Delta-8 product, which makes sense from a formulation sure. standpoint, sure. right? Because then yep. you're adding a natural into it, right? Sure. Um, you just got to have a, a like a broad spectrum uh, Delta-9 to do the dilution because you don't want to be adding Delta-9 to, to it as you're diluting it. So. Yep. Um, you know, those are the things that you, you know, from a formulation standpoint, guys, uh, for those of you who are formulators and, uh, you know, have your different formulas and you're looking at taste and flavor and aroma, things like that. Um, 
we we can help you with that. Uh, you know, just give us a buzz, um, and we can we can help you with all kinds of items. Really, can help you with SOPs, SOP development, yes. bill of materials development. We can help you with you know understanding. Okay, hey, look, here's all the ingredients that you need. Here's all the in, you know the imp improvements that you need, and and the certifications that you need for those ingredients. Are you guys interested in doing batch records? You know, we can help you. We have a great software for that. A Absolutely. great software yep. for doing batch records, patching, packaging batch records. If you guys, uh, some people are just packagers, you know, yeah. um, and they're not doing the full process and they, they you know, yep. the IGW check out IGW. The IGW puts app. all that in oh, and it, it the SOPs great. are built in and it you, you follow that formulation all the way through. Um, along with a built-in bomb and uh, uh, and when I say bomb a lot of maybe people don't understand what that is that's a bill of materials it's B -O -M. A B -O -M. Yep. and that's uh, you know in the um, kind of in the accounting world you know, yep. in the ERP uh, which is enterprise resource management um, uh, or e e enterprise resource planning it's software okay yes. And this is what um, all of the accountants and all yeah. the financial people use yeah. to run your business. Yeah. yeah, and if you're and if you're going for GMP, these are the things that you want to have in place. And the batch records not only show that formulation for this is how much you use, but how at what temperature and at for how long right. and everything. So you want to monitor all that so you can replicate right. completely. Right. Exactly. So. So just a cap uh, recap here. Uh, demand to see a chromatogram. Um, residuals may not be tested. We saw that on that that one. Scary. And I, I don't think actually I don't think I got the other uh, C of A's uh, to really take a look at what other people are doing. Yeah. But there were three different brands that were represented, and uh, you know no no sense in calling out the brand. It's just a matter of hey guys just yeah do the right thing comply and then um leachables may be present so you got to be careful about that so there's a couple different things so um that is the that is the bottom line guys that was awesome yeah. i i liked that uh, one other quick thing that in talking about having residuals in and and you know doing an entourage effect um the other thing that i heard you know in the vape pens is you know when you get that caustic effect it's like okay i want I'm looking for this effect right. from Delta 8 because you have people who are either looking for that mellow, chill, relaxed idea, or they're looking for managing a symptom that they have. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. you've got it, it. You've got two clients who are looking for that. Right. And with that, you can get there and it'll be a little more caustic with some of those that might be a little less compliant, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's say. Um, and that's like from from a drink. But if it, with the outlaws uh, vape that we're, we're formulating, that's the difference between having something a little more caustic to a really good experience. And for you to get re repeat customers and people wanting demand, you want a good good experience with that vape or with that gummy for your consumer. Right. And that's what we can help you with on the formulation right, right. side, et cetera. So, yeah. so do that. It's, it's kind of like, well, you can, you can get a, a drunk buzz if you will, from drinking Everclear, but it's a rough ride. It's a rough ride. Yeah. We did that one time. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. That was Come bad. on lab day. Okay. Um, <laughs> and if you, but if you do that and you do like the Ellis, that's more like sipping a fine scotch or bourbon. There we go. Right. Yeah. That's the difference in the Delta. So make sure that you're delivering good product, compliant product. And this is the way to do that. Um, love it. Anything you have questions about, make sure you hit the team. The drift is open. It'll be open for a time after this. But, mm -hmm. you know, get us. Go go to the site. Yeah, and if you're looking for some, you know, compliant product, you can go to outlawshemp.com. Yeah. O-U-T-L-A-W-Z. Um, hemp.com hemp hemp and you can just kind of uh you know grab some of that delta eight and try it there's uh yeah. i think they have um they have some pre-rolls there too and yeah there's know, yeah the outlaws um, brand has yeah. a lot of that different stuff so and, um good. but anyway that's that's well, how it all that's how it all goes down well done yeah. i this is this is a great series yeah thank you delta eight uh what was the first thing the, the your first slide oh, what do you the, call? the molecule the myth the legend. The molecule, the myth, the legend. Yeah. I love it. All right. Yeah, all right. Good job. See you later. Guys Thanks. Later. See you later. Bye now. Are you stuck in your hemp or cannabis business? Are you not reaching your processing goals? 
Here at Extract Lab, we offer a free 20 minute CBD jam session. A CBD jam session is a conversation with an industry expert, not a sales call. A conversation where you can talk to us about whatever issues you are having right now and where you are stuck. We will help you uncover any issues you are currently having in your business, create a solution to fit your current scale, develop a future scale up plan based on your needs and help you make your processing goals a reality all while getting your business plan back on track. Schedule your free 20 minute CBD jam session at 1-651-600-0036. Again, that number is 1-651-600-0036.